hopefully. Why do you think producing anthropology for the public is important? Well, I'm not a huge fan of the word important. I like words like interesting, engaging, distracting. Um, I think when we use the word important, sometimes we end up having a very kind of portentous and sombre idea of what anthropology is about. For me, anthropology is about having and engaging one's curiosity about human experience, life, all the different things we do, uh, the fact that there are Elvis Presley impersonators out there, and the fact that we have ancient rituals, cave art, and I think all of that comes together. Is it important? Yes, it's important. But when we're talking about popular anthropology, I, I like words like fun. Um, if an artist says, my work is very important, um, I think, you know, it raises an expectation in my mind that it's not going to be great fun to engage with. Um, is it important to have fun? Yes, it is. And I think it's very important to enjoy what we do. I think it's very important to enjoy reading and creating anthropology. And if that's what we mean by important, then I think anthropology is important. Um, I don't draw a distinction in my own mind between anthropology and popular anthropology. Because when you say popular anthropology, it implies that there's an unpopular anthropology, which of course, unfortunately, there is. But I'm, I don't uh, know anything about that. Um, for me, all anthropology should be popular. If you go back to the origins of the anthropological enterprise, especially in the 19th century, all the people who were writing back then about culture had a popular following because people read their books, like travel books, or with curiosity to know about their origins in Africa. And one of the big questions I always liked was, if we go to Africa and we open up the African jungle and we find new and exciting tribes and people, and we discover that they are cannibals, that raises a question. You know, were my ancestors once upon a time cannibals? And that was a very popular question, and it was even a popular concern. So I think the origins of anthropology were popular. Somewhere along the line, it became unpopular, because quite frankly, anthropology books are not selling the way the Golden Bough, for instance, sold, which was actually a bestseller. So I think the origins of anthropology lie in its popularity. So for us popular anthropologists, we don't feel anthropology needs to be prefaced with the word popular. You know, all anthropology should be popular. Um, and that's what we do. And uh, is that important? Yes, it's not going to save the human race. It's not going to make the lives of people um, better or more interesting. It will make them more interesting, which I think is important. Um, there is a lot of anthropology which broadly comes under the labels medical anthropology and developmental anthropology. And those anthropologists would see what they're doing as important in a kind of earnest interpretation of important, improving people's health, life expectancy, sanitation, hygiene, all of those things. Unfortunately, many of the people writing in, the, in those areas uh, make it inaccessible because I think they make the whole thing too scientific. They are important and they can still be popular. You know, uh, a dieting book is important uh, and it's also can be popular. Uh, so I'd like my message, I think, from popular anthropology is developmental studies and those traditional kind of more earnest branches of anthropology uh, can be uh, also can be popular. Mm -hmm. So what about your own popular anthropology? What is it that you do and how do you do it? Um, I always try to advise anyone who wants to write, you know, explicitly or produce explicitly popular anthropology to ask themselves, well, what is my strength in terms of my interest and my tone? Um, I like humour and I 
tried for years to be serious and failed. So um, I decided to give in and kind of embrace my humor. So I write in that interface between culture and humor. And uh, I think that uh, human behavior is a minefield of uh, fantastic humor. And there's obviously, I think I'm close to situational comedy, but I, it's not. I just think the situational comedy comedians have hijacked what we should be doing. Um, I write humorous anthropology because that's what I can do when I have to do what I do. If you're desperately earnest, say, about saving the planet, which I'm not because my sense of humor gets in the way, then I think if you want to be a popular anthropologist and you're very, very earnest, then you should roll out your earnestness, you know, and that can be popular. And I think there are lots of popular um, books in the environmental movement that anthropology could take lessons from. Um, so I write books, I write humorous books, and I like to if you like, suck the audience in and give them a serious message heavily disguised in um, the humorous situations. And my first stab at humorous anthropology was a bit of a disaster because I wrote humorous anthropology, well it was actually humorous sociology for sociologists. But then I had a huge um, insight. I decided to write humorous sociology for human beings and uh, that worked and I got a very good response to that. So I have written a lot of, um, I suppose, uh, relatively serious, funny, um, academic uh, essays in collections which have stood out. Uh, a reviewer said it was a bit like um, going to an art gallery and my essay in the middle of a collection was like landscape, 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 nude with pear, landscape, landscape. So I moved on to writing popular, well humorous um, anthropology for um, a lay audience. Um, my first attempt at that uh, was a book called How to Be Irish and it eschews kind of traditional notions of Irishness and cliché, which I think one can do as an anthropologist that one couldn't do without that anthropological training. So I tried to find ways in which I thought we differed from other people. Uh, I think anthropologically, the more I look at it, the more I think we're all the same. But then I had to go out and find aspects of us that um, were gratuitously Irish. I immersed myself in a medical practice. I found a, I persuaded a doctor to let me pass myself off as a, a doctor. I went to funerals. I worked with builders and I kind of hung out with families while they were in the middle of domestic disputes and wrote about them. So I liked themes, traditional themes like death, how to die an Irish death and how to go to a funeral. And a lot of younger people say, oh, I don't like funerals, they're too depressing. Um, but I would try and find the humor, if possible, in a, hu in a funeral. And one can get into trouble doing that. Um, how to be a traditional Irish builder. So it's a bit like a cultural guidebook. Unfortunately, the response to that was very, very good. Um, I wrote another one. And then I decided how would I, I I'd take a different angle on producing popular anthropology. And I, I'm currently in the middle of writing a fictionalized life of an anthropologist who was, was one time popular, but isn't in any way amusing, and that's uh, Malinowski. And the disappointing thing for me about Malinowski is his so-called salacious diaries are disappointingly unsalacious. So I decided to kind of revisit his life and make his diaries even more dramatic and uh, xenophobic and racist and sexist than they actually are. Because I really like the idea of people who are absolutely unprepared for travel in the early parts of the 20th century 
been dropped into the middle of like tropical islands and producing these amazingly rational ethnographies, you know, as if they just poured spontaneously out of them. So I kind of looking at the backstory, the the malaria, the drug addictions, the bitching and complaining about the being um, doing the field work. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. So I'm trying to popularize Malinowski, or my version of Malinowski. It was not really Malinowski at all. So I write books. Um, and the next project I'm going to do is I'm going to write an ethnography of the future. Um, and I think that would be wonderful because it won't be wrong because it hasn't happened yet. And I just think, I love the idea. I was inspired by Star Trek. I saw Star Trek recently. And I love the idea that a spaceship is so hygienic and there's no rubbish lying around and everyone is nicely dressed and you don't see where they do their laundry and there's no empty plates. Um, and people have kind of, you know, subverted that in various kind of cult um, science fiction. But I didn't want to do a science fiction then, I wanted to do a, t a culture fiction and cast ourselves into the future and say, what kinds of cultural issues will people be wrestling with? Um, and I think a lot of science fiction has produced the idea that in a thousand years' time we'll be amazingly sophisticated, whereas I think we'll just be much the same as we are now, but with maybe a little bit of technology that actually works. I love the idea at the moment that we have mobile phones and everyone goes on about mobile phones and how you can text each other and Skype and do Twitter, but you can't actually phone anybody because you can't hear them on the other end of the phone. And I love the irony of the fact that a phone is no longer a phone, but we praise it, you know, as the greatest invention. So I want to go a hundred years into the future. And one of the things I'm writing about is I don't believe in aliens and people coming to terms with discovering that there is no one else in the universe and only the person that goes with that. Um, so that's where my story starts. And so I'm, that's my idea of anthropology. It's not right. everyone's idea of anthropology. Um, so I do worry that perhaps at the moment I'm the only popular anthropologist because my advice to popular anthropology was to take the word anthropology out of popular anthropology and just go with popular. So I do popular writing, but it actually is anthropology. So you've really answered the next question, why what you like about your chosen medium as a way of communicating, that you amuses yourself as much as your... Oh absolutely, and I must say selfishly, I, since I was a kid, I've been writing jokes and telling jokes and laughing at them. And, uh, you know, I can tell the same joke 50 times. And I, for me, it gets funny. For the people around me, no. So, um, yeah, I think it's really important to enjoy what you do. Um, and I enjoy writing. I, I love writing. Probably the most disappointing thing for me about unpopular anthropology is that students will often give me the impression that writing an essay or writing a thesis is a burden, you know, and something that has to be endured. And I think it's, it's sad that students aren't able to assert themselves enough to say, look, I want to do something I enjoy, and if I don't enjoy this, I'll find something I do enjoy. Um, I always really, really enjoyed exams in university. Um, I loved them. Um, I used to ask if we could have more because I, I just loved them. It was like running races, it was competitive. Um, my friends thought it was very strange that way. But if you don't love exams and you don't love writing essays and you don't laugh at your own jokes, I mean, what's the point? I think as well, if you don't laugh at your own humor, no one else will. So it's a starting point. And to make a living doing this um, is wonderful. And that is the most important thing about popular anthropology. If you can sell books because they're popular and have a wider readership, then you can actually make a living from this. And I think, unfortunately, 
academia has been put under too much of a burden to provide too many anthropologists with employment, you know, when there are other means of doing it. Um, and writing books uh, that people want to read is terrific. I still can't resist going up to someone in a bookshop when I see them buying my book or looking at it and telling them I wrote it and how happy I am that they're interested in it. And if they don't scream and run away, um, I think about it as inverse stalking. You know, I stalk my potential readers. Um, we can have great fun. I do love particularly, especially with the internet, if someone reads my book and posts something positive, you know, okay, no one's posting something negative. And I love the fact that there are people out there I don't know and I'll never meet who are handing over hard cash to buy my books and read them. So I think, you know, that's great. That's one of the reasons why I like it. Okay, and then also besides the medium of writing um, and being published essays, um, what other um, types of media do you engage in? Um, since I've become popular, I've been asked to um, talk about a whole range of topics from the death of Margaret Thatcher through to um, people like uh, the Seamus Heaney in poetry um, because um, as an anthropologist, and I think a great thing about anthropology is we officially know everything about everything and we can talk about everything from physics through to poetry or tropical diseases. Um, and that's great uh, as a TV or magazine contributor. Um, so I like to do radio and TV, especially topics I know nothing about. I find that very challenging. I used, when I taught, I used to try to tell my students that they should train themselves to speak on a subject and edit themselves and speak on for a very limited time, say three minutes or five minutes, because that's what um, popular broadcasters want and need. I wish I had more time for blogging. I wrote some blogs, but I find I don't have time to write my um, popular anthropology and write blogs. I think my only tip to writers is write books or write articles or whatever one is writing. So writing blogs gets in the way. Um, but I, I would like to do things like um, posters, um, slogans. My biggest distraction at the moment is tweeting and I tweet in the kind of sardonic style of um, my books and I try to base my tweets in an historical or a cultural um, comment. So I look at anniversaries for instance of people who were born and died and if they're poets or writers I tend to try and find a pertinent quote from them. Um, my favourite tweet or my su most successful tweet from last year was celebrating the anniversary of the marriage of Marie and Pierre Curie where the bride was radiant. I like that one. Um, and that's the kind of thing I do and I get uh, quite a following from that. And one of the good things about that is when people read that and they see on my profile that I'm an anthropologist, they imagine that all anthropologists are as um, distracting as I am. So I'm kind of leading people into anthropology. So I think I'm doing a good, a good deed for anthropology. And how would you like to see popular anthropology develop in the future? And what do you think the main challenges are? I think anthropologists, I'd like to see anthropology students being trained to contribute to non-anthropological fields rather than explicitly anthropological fields. And that does happen um, in some places. I'd like to see anthropologists trained explicitly to contribute to business, design, uh, medicine, uh, travel, um, travel writing, um, humour, film production. Um, I used to teach ethnographic film and documentary filmmaking um, years ago and I was very much involved with teaching students how to make films and how to make documentary films. I also used to enjoy teaching students before technology was popular um, how to use um, computing. 
computers and both for gathering research and processing um, data. So they are areas in which I think anthropologists can develop useful skills um, and what we might call popular skills. And I know that a lot of anthropologists are contributing very much to um, the world of design and things like smart homes. Um, for instance, aging. We have um, a population that is an increasing in size, aging population, and uh, aging and engagement with the world, I think, is an area that anthropologists are starting to popularize. I think they can do that by getting away from the traditional ethnographic jargon that is explicitly designed to teach ethnographers how to be ethnographers rather than teaching ethnographers how to contribute to other areas like medical anthropology, developmental anthropology. Um, I think that's a huge challenge. I think there's a strange thing about anthropology that when people study it in university they want to become an anthropologist and they see it as a profession like being in medicine or an engineer. If one studies engineering as an undergraduate one obviously thinks about becoming an engineer. Um, if you study philosophy it's less likely you'll think about yourself as being a philosopher because there are less opportunities to wear a toga and walk around you know, the streets. Um, so I think that's a big challenge. Also, I think anthropology has slightly lost its way because of the tendency for ethnographers to write ethnography almost exclusively for their peers to attract um, commendations on their use of jargon or their so-called insight. Probably the most critical view I have of anthropology at the moment is that where it is intellectual, it is intellectual as a substitute for being intelligent. Um, I think intelligent anthropology would askew uh, jargon and um, would apply itself to very many valuable areas. That's a 